Through this year's conference theme, Re-Energize, Re-Entry, we gather to take a few moments the next three days to regroup. Today we open the conference by reflecting, by reflecting, reflecting upon the more than 18,000 ex-offenders who return home to Missouri towns, cities, and small municipalities each year. By reflecting on this statewide Missouri reentry process, the MRP teams, the Missouri model, the national model that brings together federal, state, local resources, and it puts all of us to work around the very serious work of re-engagement of ex-offenders back into our societies. This is what we're about, about breathing new life into our work. And I know for, for us in the field who are doing the work day to day, it's, it can be grinding. I mean, it can, it can really weigh us down. It, it is heavy work, it is difficult work, and oftentimes we don't see much change or in front of us we don't see some instantaneous gratification about the work. Sometimes that takes years before we see any, any uh, empirical evidence that what we have done in the community is really happening. So I know it, it can be laborious, if you will. So I think this is a great opportunity to do that. You know, I've always found um, you get to meet some new people, you hear new things, new interactions, and all of that helps kind of build that inner core and refresh us. But we each need to find out in our lives what it is that's going to keep us focused, and I think as Wendell said yesterday, what it is that's going to get us out of bed every day. You know, I really believe that at the end of whatever contact that you may have with a client, that somehow, some way, you find a way to smile and to be positive with them, and to shake their hand, and to be upbeat, and to reinforce them, even though it's sticking in your craw somehow. You gotta do that. It's a tough business, and it gets harder all the time. It is a difficult business. But you know, if not now, when, and if not us, who? And I think you need to keep that in mind at all times. You can make the biggest difference in the world. You know that when you make a difference with a client, you've saved the life, you've saved the rape, you've saved the burglary, you don't know that. But you must assume it each time you have that contact, that I can make this kind of difference to interdict victimization. And that's a really critical piece as well. Do it. I think it's so important that the work that you folks do for reentry. In law enforcement, I don't think most of us consider the consequence of our jobs beyond you're under arrest, beyond getting them before the court, and if they're convicted, they're incarceration. And as a public, I don't think we consider this very much. The work that you folks are doing is critical, critical to helping keep recidivism rates down and giving people another opportunity to become productive citizens. Because if we've learned nothing from the media, it's that we are a nation of second chances. So I want, you know, just, I just want to recognize what you folks do. I think it is so, so important. And I applaud you for your efforts. God bless you. I wish you all the luck. Okay, so we get it. Human trafficking is a big issue, but is it really happening here? That's the very thing that was laid on my heart. So I began doing the research. St. Louis is considered to be in the top 20 jurisdictions of human trafficking activity in the country. Kansas City has the most trafficking cases prosecuted in our entire country. But the thing that I want you guys to let sink in is the fact that Kansas City is not on the map for high, uh, high activity of trafficking. However, we have more cases prosecuted than anywhere else in the country. That should be a big red flag to show us how prevalent this crime is. This is the Justice Center in St. Louis County. It was built in 1998, designed capacity for 1,232 people. We have had up to 1,400 people, so, so some significant overcrowding. One response to that is to say, okay, well, let's, let's just build more jail cells. Well, you know, sometimes that's necessary, but it, it really cannot be and should not be our first response. We need to look at community resources, we need to look at alternatives to incarceration, and we need to look at initiatives to um, 
try and build bridges with the community, build bridges with the criminal justice system so that we can alleviate overcrowding uh, as much as possible and use building more sales, cells, for example, as a last resort.